just came over from uh, Vancouver Island, uh, and uh, we just did a rally actually up in Campbell River last night, or not rally, at a town hall. We had uh, sold out 240 people in the room, but we had to turn away between 50 and 100 people because we just didn't have space. We had 104 that were on the uh, online uh, through, uh, through uh, I guess it was Zoom, that way I think was uh, the access for that. But anyway, the reality of it was this. People are sick and tired of what's going on in this province. And particularly for that one, that was all about healthcare. And you people here in Surrey know very well the issue of healthcare. I mean, the scanning clinic, I think, was shut down just the other day because it wasn't staffing. This is the biggest issue that we have as a province. We do not have the healthcare workers that we need to be able to provide services. And we have a pool of people between seven and 10,000 people, healthcare professionals, that either were fired or left the system because of mandatory vaccines. These people could very easily come back in and help us all with our healthcare situation. But that's only part of the solution that we need, but we need to be hiring these people back. We need to drop these mandates. We need to get people in the system to be able to provide us with services. You look at the situation here in Surrey, there's no question that we need another hospital. Quite frankly, we probably need more than one more hospital in Surrey. Surrey for the last, I don't know how many years, has been treated as a second class city. This is unacceptable in my mind. This is the largest city in the province. It is the fastest growing city in the province. It is the youngest city in the province. It is the most diverse city in the province. Why on earth are we not treating it the way it should be? Why do we not have it as the focus of service? Why can't you get cardiovascular services south of the Fraser? Why can't, why don't we have another children's hospital South of the Fraser. Why is it that so that um, uh, cancer care, quite frankly, is just not available? We're having to send people across the border. This is this is wrong. This is an approach that needs to change, and that's something that the Conservative Party of British Columbia will do. And tell you something, Surrey is going to be a battleground in this next election. It will be the, one of the big battlegrounds in terms of who's going to form government. We're going to be fighting hard in Surrey because, quite frankly, you guys deserve it. When I think about the portables and what's going on with our schools and the situation here, and now they want to put our kids on shift, I don't know if anybody here uh, has experienced that as a kid. I, when I was going to school, I was put on shift for one year. And that was uh, up in Prince George because the, the town was growing and they are building a new school. And I get it, for a year, that makes sense. But if that's the solution for, for kids, for the generation, for their entire existence in school, that just makes no sense at all. Can you imagine? You know, you're, you're having to send your child off to school at 7 o'clock in the morning, and then they get off school around 1.32 in the afternoon, or you're sending your child to school at 2 and they get off at 7 at night? I mean, like, that makes sense, you know, if we had to for a shift, but you can't be doing that on a full-time basis. Surrey needs desperately a significant investment. We need to be able to expand schools that we have. We need to be able to look at and uh, use, utilize the property we have. We have a potential with uh, agricultural land, that's isolated, that's not being used to be able to use for construction. We need to put a, a plan in place. It's not gonna happen overnight, but we need to have a 10 year plan in place to be able to see the kind of services that are needed for Surrey as a focus. <clears throat> I think about uh, uh, one of the other challenges, I started talking about healthcare. I, I just wanna carry on with this for a second. I was talking with one of the, uh, one of the surgeons here in, uh, in Surrey. And he mentioned to me, I was talking about cancer care in particular, he mentioned to me uh, the challenges and the issues, and I said, well, my wife actually had surgery in the year 2000. She had cervical cancer, and uh, we're fortunate, you know, they found the cancer early, able to go through and get surgery and treatment, and, and she's doing fine, right? I mean, she's 24 years now, uh, cancer-free. But I asked the surgeon about, about this, and he said, you know, the reality is, with the wait times today and the challenges today, that may not have been caught. She may have actually died. To me, that's personal. This should not be the way healthcare is in this province, and certainly not in the city of Surrey. We need to be dramatically changing how we deliver healthcare in this province of British Columbia. You know, there's only one jurisdiction in the world that has a healthcare system similar to what we do in Canada, what we do in British Columbia, and that's North Korea. And I'm sorry, that is not a very good example for us to be following. When you look at the uh, at healthcare that's delivered in Europe, places like Switzerland, places like the Netherlands, uh, places even like Australia, where they have a blended model, it's universal healthcare, but it's blended, they have much better services. 
and at a lower cost. Why aren't we doing this in here in British Columbia? We've got surgeons who get eight hours of surgery time a week. They could easily be doing 30 or 40 hours, but that's all the time they have that they get that's available to them. This is wrong. We need to be using these professionals. We need to be able to make sure that we can provide those services. But you know, there's a lot more that we need to be thinking about as well uh, than just healthcare. When I think about the affordability issue uh, in, this, in, in British Columbia, when I think about the youth in particular that are coming up to me and saying, I'm working one job or I'm working two jobs, I can't afford to, you know, bear, I'm sorry, I can barely afford to put food on the table to be able to pay my rent. I can't even hope to put money away for my retirement. I have no hope of being able to buy a home. How do I raise a family? Why am I here? Why am I staying in British Columbia? We need to be giving these people hope. We need to figure out how we're driving down the costs that, that government is imposing. We need to make sure that people can earn a good living and have that opportunity to build, build the families that you know, we have all had in our lifetimes and that we want to be able to see for our kids or our grandkids. And that's one of the reasons why we're going to ax the carbon tax. That carbon tax by 2030 will have taken $27,000 out of a family of four. That's how much you're going to be paying in the carbon tax if this thing keeps going up. It's crazy. Who can afford that? Who can afford that, in, that sort of a hit in, in terms of our lifestyle? But it's more than that. The carbon tax goes into everything that you do. All the, the, the food that's produced that you consume, everything you buy in stores is, that's trucked there, all of these things. It's, it goes into everything. You just don't necessarily see it. So all you see is paying you know, an extra 20 cents or whatever it is at, at the gas pump. It's more than that. It's much more than that. It goes into our cost of housing. This has to come to an end. And why, why is it there? We've got a government that somehow believes that taxing people into poverty is going to change the weather. It makes no sense whatsoever to be doing this. It's all about an ideology. It's not about people. And as a Conservative Party of British Columbia, that's why I like to say it's not about being Conservative or being Liberal or NDP or Green for that matter. It's just standing for what's right, fighting for the average everyday person and trying to do everything we can in a government that's focused on making life better for people. And that's whether it's making life more affordable or whether it is you know, providing healthcare services, changing things in education. That's where we need to be as a government, not about these ideologies. Uh, one last thing I, I just want to quickly touch on as well, and that is housing, because I can tell you that's a huge piece. There's three big things in, in, uh, throughout BC. It doesn't matter which city you're in, whether it's Surrey or whether it's Vancouver or whether it's Prince George or even my hometown of uh, Vanderhoof. Housing right now is a huge problem. It just is. We are not building anywhere close to enough homes. We've got people coming in and we need immigration, but you know, that's another issue. Perhaps we should talk a little bit about how we control our immigration properly, but we need to be able to have housing for people. So what does that mean? We have to drive between 100 and $150 billion in investment in housing every year. That's what's needed. We need, to be, we need to be building close to 100,000 new homes a year in this province for a decade just to catch up with what is to, to the demand that's there and to be able to build out for the future. That's a huge amount that has to come from the private sector. We need to figure out how do we reduce the times? How do we make sure that we bring down the cost structure of doing this? How do we make sure that the, the companies that are going to do the investment choose to actually make that investment here in British Columbia because many developers today are going south of the border or anywhere else because they just they look at British Columbia and say it's just too tough to do business here and that has to change. <clears throat> Housing though is going to take more government needs to make strategic investments of course there's a whole bunch of things in there we're going to have a significant housing policy that we're going to roll out in the very near future. So why do we do all this? It's really simple. Why are we talking about all these things? I grew up in British Columbia. I'm a proud British Columbian. I'm a proud Canadian. And I know everybody here is proud of where they are. And I know many people have come from different places. My family came from Europe uh, many years ago. Uh, my, my family moved uh, into British Columbia uh, back in the, uh, the late 40s, early 50s. <clears throat> and they moved here because they saw hope. They saw this as a place where you, know, you can build a good future, where there's peace where there's respect, where there's melting pot, where 
various faiths, various peoples, all can find a home together. Let's restore that. Let's make that what British Columbia should be going forward as our future. Let's make sure that people can be proud of being British Columbia, unlike the current government, the NDP government, that actually is telling the bureaucracy today that you should not refer to people as British Columbians. Because they figure that's wrong. That's causing some offense to somebody. And I'm sorry, we're British Columbians. We're Canadians. And yes, people come from all other corners of the world and they're proud of their heritage and their history, and that's great. But that's who we are. We are that melting pot of all these different peoples that can come together, that can build the society that we have today. And it doesn't matter where they come from. It, what it matters is who we are as a province and how we treat people and how we make sure that there's a future. That's what the Conservatives need to be able to do because it's, the narrative is lost. We've got a government that is all about divisions, it's all about driving wedges between people and pointing people and saying, they're the problem. No, 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 they're the problem. Well, I can tell you, the problem sits with one group and it's called government. We need to get government out of the way. We need to get government to be able to respect people so that we can build that future. And that is what we are going to deliver. You know, I'm really proud of the people that have stepped up to the plate to run for us. We've got a great team here in Surrey. We've got a great team that we're building right around this province. And it's people that have stepped up to run for a party that has not elected anybody since the 1970s, that hasn't formed a government since 1927. And they're prepared to step up to the plate for us as the Conservative Party because they believe in this province. They believe in what we can do as a future. They believe that with a good government, with government that is respectful of people, that isn't tied into ideologies, we can actually be proud of where we are and what we're doing as a province of British Columbia. This is the goal of the Conservative Party of British Columbia. This is what we need to do, and it has to be grassroots. We're not going to be able to have spend, guys. We're not going to be able to do, do any of that kind of stuff. It has to be people on the ground. And that's why I'm so pleased that all of you have come out here today to be part of this. Because it needs to be, it needs to touch us in the heart. It needs to touch who we are as a people to be able to build that movement. Like I said in the beginning, Surrey is going to be a battleground. We need to win seats. We need to win a lot of seats here in Surrey to form government. We are going to be fighting for every single one of these seats. And I can tell you, all these people here that are running, they've got the same passion. They want to deliver it. They are going to be great MLAs representing the great city of Surrey and making sure that Surrey is no longer treated as a second-class city. Thanks once again, everybody, for coming out.